And if I had a title for today's sermon, the title would be, In God's Hands, Little is Much. Amen. In God's Hands, Little is Much. Do this with me. Let's look at the person next to you real quick. Look at the person sitting right next to you and repeat this with me. Say to them, in God's hands, little is much. Okay, look at one more person. And let's say this again. Here we go. In God's hands, little is much. Amen, amen. Spirit of, Spirit enjoying in the Halloween festivities. And we had a lot of fun. The night was great, uh, particularly for me because I had never really been to Harrisburg and been out on the town. And as the night progressed, you know, things got better and better until we were going back, closing out the night to my car. And as we were proceeding down the road where my car was, we were stopped by a group of uh, adult men, not children, but adult men, who proceeded to who, or who thought it was their, uh, their duty to stop us and begin to call us out of our character. They called us all kinds of names, called us names that I cannot repeat in this church. And the reason for them uh, calling us out so was because they perceived that some of us in the group were a part of the gay community. And so they began to look at the way we were dressed and they began to look at the way we walked and they looked at all the things that they could find that were different from themselves and they begin to verbally assault us. Mm -hmm. And for one of my friends who was from that city, he found this experience most heartening. He tells me that that was a community that he had grew up in. The very neighborhood, the very streets that we walked down were the streets where he had been many times before. And so for him to be called out of his personal character in the area in which he is from was a great uh, tragedy. And so as I called uh, a friend in Philadelphia, and we were talking about the situation, uh, and you know, I told him the, the parts of the situation, he called me back two hours later and said that in Philadelphia, the very next day now, we were talking about it two hours later, he calls me back and says that he himself was walking down the street in my hometown, Philly, and as he was walking down the street, a group of young men came on bikes and began to make fun of him. Again, because he is a part of the gay community. He called him all kinds of horrible names. And so that got me wondering, you know, how often does this stuff happen, you know, to people uh, as they're minding their business? And so as I begin to do some research, I discovered some saddening statistics that are particularly around LGBT youth. And I want to read some of these things. These are very sad statistics. 90% of all LGBT students hear anti-LGBT comments in school. On average, an LGBT high school student will hear 26 anti-gay slurs per day. Mm -hmm. One third of these slurs come from a staff member. Mm. 
84% of gay youth report verbal harassment at school because of their gender identity and or sexual orientation. And I think the one that's most disheartening for me is this last one here, that 28% of LGBT youth drop out of school due to harassment. Mm -hmm. And so we are dealing with a horrible academic, uh, epidemic rather, in our society. And from my personal experience, I have observed that in almost all cases of public humiliation, the offender, the one who <coughs> verbally assaults another, does so when she or he is in the company of peers. Now the reason for this is often people find it easy to gain credibility and approval from their peers by devaluing people who appear different from themselves, who appear different from the norms of that group. In essence, we're talking about going for the low-hanging fruit, right? Talking about a poor means to a poor end. The poor means uh, describes people who will use another person's physical characteristics or something simple about a person or about a particular situation to bring people down to pull themselves up. For a poor end, a poor end describing uh, an attaboy, doing this for the simple sense or a false sense of affirmation. And before we write this off as behavior that is geared towards young people or behavior that's geared towards those coming through adolescence, let me remind you that oftentimes it is the oldest folks in the church. It is the people of our society who claim to be leaders, who claim to be the mature ones who behave in such manners. Have you ever seen or have you ever been in a situation where you have engaged people, grown folks now, who choose a poor means to a poor end? Mm -hmm. And what is most saddening about situations such as this? What is most saddening about people who prefer a poor means to a poor end is that in most cases, they are willing to do so even when they know they are hurting people. Mm -hmm. They are willing to do so even when they are able to sense the pain that they are causing in individuals as they are causing it. They are willing to go up against their own moral compass and sensibilities just to up their status. Mm -hmm. My friends, we are living in a broken society. Mm -hmm. We are living in a culture that prioritizes images, ideas, and behaviors mm 